Hey everybody, it's Wes from Printful. And I'm Summer from Bella Canvas. Today we're at their headquarters here in Los Angeles and we're going to learn all about merchandising. We're going to talk about what it is and how it can help you grow your sales for your online store. If you stay tuned to the end of this video, you're going to learn some actionable tips to grow your own collection for your online store. Before we get started, go ahead and hit subscribe so that way you never miss new content just like this. This is pretty exciting because I don't know too much about merchandising. Yeah. And when I hear about it, I like picture myself as like a little kid going to the department store with my parents. Uh. <laughs> so what is merchandising? Can you yeah, tell us about sure. that? Yeah, sure. It's the assortment of product. There's online merchandising and there's in-store merchandising, and each is its own kind of beast. Basically the assortment of product in a given store or web store. So with merchandising, how can that help you actually boost your sales? Because that's something I, I, like, I don't necessarily connect the dots on. So if we plan out your merchandising, how does that help us grow our sales? Yeah, there's a few different ways. One of the biggest mistakes that we see people make is not choosing a large enough selection of product or color. So we see this a lot. Merchandising can be everything from an online shop to a concert merch booth. For example, if somebody were to use all black t-shirts that are kind of a similar cut with different graphics, they're probably not going to grow a lot of sales because a person only needs so many black t-shirts and probably isn't going to buy in multiples. So your goal with merchandising is always how are you going to get people to buy in multiples. So there's some tips for getting customers to buy in multiples. It really has to do with the diversity of your style selection. Tips for that are choose different silhouettes, choose different colors, and choose different fabrics. You might have a jersey tee, mm -hmm. a flowy tank top, and a crop fleece. Because you have all three items, you're more likely to find a customer if they're interested in your branding, they're interested in your message, that they're not just going to buy one thing and leave, they're likely to buy more than one. So that's always the goal with merchandising. So for anyone watching that doesn't know anything at all about merchandising, what are some like good first steps that they should take? It's obvious, but sometimes overlooked. So, and that's to know your customer. What are they eating? What are they watching? What are they wearing? Where are they hanging out? The more details that you have on your customer, the more tailored your assortment and your merchandise will be towards that customer and the more success that you're gonna have. For example, like the colors that you add aren't just random colors that you like. Those are colors that your customer is wearing or your target demographic would be into. Beyond that, of course, there's seasonality. So are you in cold weather or hot weather? It's not going to make sense to maybe have a long sleeve t-shirt option in Florida in the summer if you're a brick and mortar store. You know, the seasonality is an element as well. That's a really good point because especially with print on demand, people fall into a trap sometimes of just putting a product online and then letting it go stagnant for a long time. So all those tips you just gave about seasonality and paying attention to where your customers are and swapping those things out kind of helps keep your store fresh throughout the year. Using your friends or customers as a focus group to see like what fabrics they're gravitating to, all those things are gonna just make you more successful in the end with your merchandising strategy. You mentioned silhouettes yeah. earlier. Can you tell me more about like what you mean by that, like a silhouette? Because some of us might not know like what that means and how we can like, sure. incorporate that. So in layman's terms, it's a style. For example, a unisex crew neck t-shirt is a silhouette. Okay. So when I say diversify your silhouette options, I mean don't choose all unisex crew neck uh, short sleeve tees. Okay. So throw in a v-neck, throw in a long sleeve, throw in a tank top. Depending on who your audience is, they're going to pay attention to those details and it might be the t determining factor to buy one t-shirt over another. Great. And then if they really like your style and like your designs and what you're doing, that's when they might buy more than one thing. Yeah, go, oh, totally. I like this and this. I keep using the example of the short sleeve crew neck unisex yep. tee because that is by far Bella Canvas's number one seller. I'm sure it's Printful's number one yeah, seller totally. too. People get a little bit fatigued with that same style, not having all t-shirts with like a center print but mixing that up as well will also kind of create some diversity where if somebody buys a a fleece and a t-shirt and the graphics different it feels like they aren't adding more of the same to their wardrobe right okay mm -hmm. that's really great advice yeah. i love that Can you talk to us a little bit about color? You gave a great example about you can only have so many black tees. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, can you just talk to me like about how you can add color, what to pay attention to, and how does that work? Yeah, black is the number one selling t-shirt in our industry. It's our number one seller in most styles. But it doesn't mean you should just add more black t-shirts to your merchandising assortment, because that's not interesting, and people aren't going to take notice of that. So there's some interesting kind of consumer psychology where if you add a pop color, even if that color doesn't um, have the most sales, other sales will rise as a result of that. So the reason that is, is a color might draw you in. So if you see something like, for example, this dusty blue, even if that's not a color that you would wear, you might maybe take notice of it because it's different and it's unique. And then your eye would move to the next style, which might end up being a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt or something that might get more everyday wear but uh, your overall sales are going to result by having that color that draws you in. So if you think about window shopping, you're mm -hmm. never gonna go into a store with just like black and white t-shirts on the mannequin. Right. There's always something different, some pop kind of hero piece that mm -hmm. people will use to drive sales of the overall volume across like, you know, other styles in their store up across the board. Cool, yeah. would you say that also goes in with like the seasonal color? like? There's always like a color of summer yeah. and you, you'll notice like one store kind of has that. Do you think that's kind of like what's happening? To a degree for sure. Like there was like that millennial pink moment, you know, right, where yeah. that was everywhere. Right now we're seeing a lot of yellows and reds, um, a lot more kind of towards like the primary hues. You can kind of use your uh, pop color as your hero style that you would use across like digital advertising, in your emails, things like that. Because mm -hmm. people are more likely to click through to something interesting, something unique that stimulates their imagination, creativity versus something generic. Even if they end up buying that more generic t-shirt, you're more likely to get clicks on something that they haven't seen before. Yeah, that's really great advice. We talked about silhouettes yeah. and colors, so let's talk about what to actually put on the shirt. Can you okay. talk to me about graphics and how that can fit into the fold of merchandising? Yeah, sure. Um, there's a big mistake that we see here as well, and that's using the same graphic on too many styles. This right. goes back to the idea you want people to buy in multiples and nobody needs the same logo like in three different shirts. So we recommend no more than maybe two or three colors or styles using the same graphic. If your thing is like puns and witty t-shirts, for example, like the coffee first that we see everywhere, right. you don't put coffee first on like 10 t-shirts. Maybe right. pick a fleece, a tri-blend, and a jersey so people can kind of choose the style that matches like their needs, but you don't need to put it in 10 colors. Right, totally. Because people get information overload, and it's like uh, when you're trying to decide like what to Postmates, and there's so many options that you just don't end up eating. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Or you spend like all night trying to figure out what you want to watch, and then you never watch exactly. anything. Exactly. Decision overload can be a detriment to uh, you know, making a purchase. Right, yeah. So I tell people all the time, like, there's so many different options of like blue, and it's yeah. like you don't need to give those to your end customer. Yeah. Like, you pick the yeah. blue that you want. You to tell sell. people what they want. Right. This point, I'm really excited to learn about, yeah. which is pricing. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Kind of like the strategy there in choosing like your price points. Yeah, for sure. There's been a lot of studies done about kind of like best practices for pricing strategy, which is good, better, best. So you don't want to have all your t-shirts be one price because then people don't feel like they um, are a part of the decision and the decision becomes binary, buy or don't buy. Right. When you give them pricing tiers, like say an $18 tee, a $20 tee, and a $24 tee, sales will go up across the board mm -hmm. because one, you have a price range that can meet more, a bigger variety of budgets, and two, people feel like they're like empowered, like they're making a decision. So if they go with the middle option, they might feel like they got a good deal because they, you know, aren't going for the most expensive. And same goes if they go for the cheapest. Studies have kind of found is most people kind of fall in that middle realm. So they want it something a little bit nicer than the basic, but still feel like they're getting a deal when there's like a more expensive option. Graphics play an impact as well. So if you have multiple prints, you can charge more. If you have a front print, a back print or something on the sleeve, you mm -hmm. can obviously charge more. Arc fleece is super lightweight, it's super soft, and there's just like this whole movement towards fleece and outerwear. Right. Have that kind of statement fleece piece, and even if it doesn't drive volume in terms of sales, it's gonna drive your t-shirt volume by having something that's more expensive.
Right, totally. I love that idea because it definitely opens it up for people at different budgets or exactly. whatever to be able to still support and buy Exactly, from you. yeah. Earlier you mentioned having kind of like your pop piece as far as color goes to mm -hmm. help draw people in. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that and kind of yeah. like a focal point? And you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's always good practice to have like a focal piece of your collection. Like if you were to like define your brand on one t-shirt, like what would that be? Use that t-shirt because like I mentioned with like decision overload, like people sometimes like want to be told what to buy and sometimes they want options, but like in the end, it's kind of nice for them you to just tell them what they want. Right. So having that kind of North Star focal piece that you can push in emails, push on digital, have it be, you know, the banner of your website really gives more definition to your brand mm -hmm. and will help customers like identify like who you are as a brand by having that one piece. Okay. Would you suggest kind of starting there and then building out from there or kind of like letting that happen naturally? Yeah, and good question. It out? I think for some brands, they already might say, oh, this is my focal piece. It's right. maybe the style, the graphic that put them on the map. So lean into that if okay. there's something that's working. If you don't have one, you could put out what you want to be the focal piece or what you see that, okay. but be open because if customers aren't, um, you know, digging what you're putting out there, you might need to switch it up and kind of test some different options to see what works. Right, and that's super important because maybe there is just something you could that be you wrong. Don't yeah, absolutely. It's all just an experiment anyway, so just pay attention to what your customers are doing. Do you have any kind of last parting like uh, words of advice for us that are going to go out and try to like work on our collection? Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't always play it safe. If there's a style that you feel like might be a little more fashion forward for your audience, it's your job to kind of push them in the direction of fashion. So take a risk on a style that you're not sure about. You know, take right. risks, you don't have much to lose. Let's take some of like this advice that I've shown you. We don't have graphics to work with, okay. but um, in terms of like the good, better, best pricing and diversifying your silhouettes and colors, we can kind of create a little capsule collection for okay. men's and then we'll create a capsule collection for women's. And hopefully everyone watching can kind of take something from that and apply it to their own store. Yeah, perfect. I'm such a visual learner, so yeah. that's going to be super helpful. Here's a little mini capsule collection that kind of hits on those three different things that we want to do. Okay. So. First, diversity of silhouettes. Yeah. You can see you have a tank top, you have a crop top, you have a relaxed tee, and then two different crop fleece options. Depending on what a customer is looking for, they're more likely to find that the more options you have. You okay. don't want to be too overkill, but you do want to have a very thoughtful selection of silhouettes. You can see we stuck to a pretty neutral color palette here with right. that pop color, like we mentioned. This is the color that might be that hero North Star focal point, right. and it's going to draw people into the shop, and then they'll see the other options you have and might find something more, like I guess, practical, for lack of the better word, right. that they're drawn to. So we don't have graphics on any of these, and graphics really would be part of the determining factor on price. Right. But just to give you an idea, like the way I would probably price this, would this would be your good piece. This is our Heather Prism, which is a really cool, unique style, yeah. but it's still at a great price, so you could kind of price that accordingly. And then you could have your mid-level range, which would be the flowy tank and the poly cotton crop. Right. Uh, that could be kind of your better. And then your best would be the fleece. Fleece really is more of a premium option. No matter what people come to your site for, they're more likely to find a different option for a variety of different budgets. Cool, yeah, I love that there's all kinds of different people that are represented here yeah. too, like what they're comfortable with and even price points that they can fit into. Yeah. So this is great. And beyond that, it's cohesive. So with color, you want to be really thoughtful. And I mean, it's visual and you can kind of train your eye to see what works and what doesn't but I wouldn't want to throw a red in with this mauve. Right. If I do, like that's fine on the website, but I wouldn't want that to be the hero image on the page because you want the colors to be very appealing and all go together and feel cohesive. Yeah, and again, you have more neutrals, but the pop color is still gonna bring people in. Um, so yeah, let's show you the men's. Oh yeah, please. Okay. Uh, all right, so this is the men's assortment I put together. Uh, there's a little difference between men's and women's. Women's, of course, has way more silhouette options. Right. So how we diversify with the men's line is more through fabric. So okay. this one is heirloom jersey. These two are tri-blend. 
This is a tri-blend rib, and then this is our fleece, our okay. poly cotton fleece. So the cool thing is you have different weights of fabric here. You have a lightweight layer, a little bit more of a substantial layer, and then, um, of course, we kind of add a little bit of uh, differentiation with this neckline, which is the raw neck tee, which is just a great way to kind of layer on a little bit something extra to men's, which is a little bit typically stale, at least, at least compared to women's. Okay. Yeah, what I love about this, too, is the way that we've incorporated color. So here we went with more of a neutral kind of color palette, mm -hmm. but with earthy pops of color. So you'll notice that this clay tri-blend and that um, military green really go well together. Um, and then, of course, like the different shades of gray and the oatmeal kind of give it that really like earthy tone. So this would be great for like an outdoorsy niche or um, something that's a little bit more like subdued in the graphics. Okay. We talk a lot about sticking with like your niche mm -hmm. and not going too broad. And yeah. It, this looks like a really great way to be able to stay in your niche while still offering a large like range of stuff for your niche. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the one thing is with Bella Canvas, you are targeting a person that is into a premium level of quality. Okay. So whether it's the 100% cotton or the um, tri-blend, everything's super, super soft. So you're never going to throw some curveball like a scratchy t-shirt right. that's going to kind of like disrupt what a customer would expect. And in terms of price here, uh, we've used a range of different fabrics and the mm -hmm. fabrics all fall under different prices. I would price the heirloom cotton tee, even though it has a raw neck, as your good. The tri-blend, since it's more of a premium fabric, really super soft as you're um, better. And then um, these two could be priced together or the heavier fleece could be like slightly above. You don't have to have three price tiers. I wouldn't have too many, but like four would be fine as okay. well. Yeah. Great, excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for showing us how to do all this. I, I know it motivates me to like hop in and see what all I can do. And it definitely like expands like the horizon of what you can do with your store. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming in and thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you found it very helpful. What other advice or learning tools would you like to have to better promote your products? Just leave them in the description below. And don't forget to show some love to Bella Canvas and subscribe to their YouTube channel as well. I'll put a link in the description below.